Unforbidden Truth. Welcome to Unforbidden Truth. I'm Andrew. On this week's episode, I'll be speaking with convicted murderer Tyler Naughton. On September 2nd, 2012, Tyler shot his grandmother, 60-year-old Cheryl Kenny, with a 22 caliber rifle four times. Tyler was living with his grandparents at the time of the killing. After killing his grandmother, he stole his grandparents' 2006 Ford pickup truck and took off. Tyler was arrested after the stolen Ford was spotted. He was arrested and charged with second-degree murder. Tyler Notton pled guilty to voluntary manslaughter and was sentenced to 30 years in prison, of which 25 years is a fixed term. Here is my interview with Tyler Notton. You have a call at no expense to you from... Tyler Notton. An inmate at Idaho Maximum Security Institution. What was your first positive memory as a child? Going fishing with my grandpa. We went to some place in Oregon, and we like uh, he was gonna buy this arrow making machine, and uh, he uh, like all the way through there, we'd stop at like rivers and fish all the way through. What was your first negative memory as a child? I don't know. I got kind of a bunch of them. I, uh, my dad used to hit me a lot when I was a little kid. Probably that. Were your parents together throughout your childhood? Uh, no. Like, during the school years, I'd live with my dad, and then uh, the summers, I would go to my mom's house. Were you close with your parents growing up? Uh, not really. My my uh, dad worked construction, so he was never there. I was always with, like, whatever girl he was dating at the time until he married my stepmom. Did you suffer any childhood abuse or trauma? Yeah. My, uh, <laughs> my dad gave, uh, when I was, like, 14 or 15, my dad gave me to my grandparents. And, uh, my grandpa, uh, touched me when I was, 14 or so. There's a, I'm, I think there's still a warrant for his arrest. Hmm. They, uh, he was a, he was a correctional officer in Oregon. And, uh, I, I don't, I don't know if it's true, but I think, like, one of the investigators on it, like, used to live with him. His, her mom worked with him at the prison. So I think they gave him a heads up, so he ran. I was like 14, 15. What was your behavior like growing up, starting as early as you can remember? Pretty good, for the most part. Like, I would get in trouble for, like, like uh, staying. Like, my dad had a rule, like, if I had to be home before dark, because I was a kid, but sometimes I'd make it, like, a little bit after dark, and he'd get all mad but for the most part is I was a pretty good kid what was your behavior like in school more so in middle school and high school uh <laughs> in high school like uh I got my driver's license and then I was like I'm done going to school hmm. and then middle school I I was just trying to get through it I did I did good like through it until I got to high school and I was like I'm over this. What is the extent of your education? I quit going to school when I was in uh, at the beginning of 11th grade but for the most part I didn't even really go to school. I went to school but like after lunch I would just leave and not come back. Did you have any specific plans after high school? No, I like I would get jobs like just random jobs like I worked at a factory for like a week and I worked construction for a month and then just like little jobs like that here and there. Let's talk about the crime you're in prison for. You're convicted of voluntary manslaughter and grand theft auto. Can you walk me through everything that led up to the murder of your grandmother and the grand theft auto charge? The day before it happened I uh I was at this girl's house that I was dating at the time. And uh, my grandpa texted me and he was like, hey, you need to come back. 
and uh, cause I I had his gas card, and uh, he's like, I need it, bring it back. So I was like, okay, and I went back, and uh, at the time, like, I was just out of my mind, cause it's been on, like, cause I've been on drugs for so long. I'm not like saying the drugs were completely it, but the uh, um, uh, I went there and. He had already left for work at the time, so I was like, all right. And uh, I was just waiting for him to come home and around, like, 3 in the morning, maybe, maybe 2 in the morning. I was hearing noises, and uh, so I went around the house, tried looking for it, and then no one, no one was around, and I looked in on my grandparents. My grandma and my great-grandma were there, and uh, they were in bed sleeping. So I was like, all right, and I went. I was playing a, I was playing a game on the computer, and um, I went back to it, and I kept, I heard the noise again. So I was like, all right, something weird's going on. So uh, I went downstairs and uh, got in the gun cabinet, grabbed a gun, came upstairs, and when I was coming up the stairs, the the lights were off, and then uh, I went from. I turned the light on in the basement when I grabbed the gun, went up the stairs, turned off the light, and then there was someone standing there, and I shot, and then uh, I turned on the light and realized that I shot my grandma. And uh, I, I looked, and she wasn't breathing, so I was like, all right. And uh, I just freaked out, and I was like, I don't know what to do. So I, uh, I got the keys to my grandpa's truck that he would let me use it sometimes. So I got into it and uh, I went to Council, Idaho. And then uh, while I was there, uh, I had this, that girl I was dating at the time, she came with me. I told her what happened. And uh, she's like, oh. And then uh, I went up there and I was just trying to figure out what I should do. And uh, I was like, all right this isn't going to work being up here. So uh, I was like, I'm just going to go try turning myself in. And on my way to turn myself in, there was a uh, council of sheriffs and uh, we passed them and uh, they turned around and I just stopped, got out of the truck and uh, they arrested me. They were like, we're detaining you for questioning and a homicide. And I was like, all right. And then they took me to council police station. Uh, like a couple of days later, they extradited me to Payette County. When I first, when they first arrested me, they just told me they were detaining me and questioning and homicide, and I was like, okay. And then they took me to the uh, Adams County Jail, and uh, there was a uh, ISP detectives pulled pulled me out of a cell and then questioned me. I told them that I did it, and uh, they're like, okay. And then they put me in the in the, the cell, and then like a day later, Payette County came and got me, and where they had a warrant for my arrest. What was it like stepping into prison, a maximum security prison at that, at just 18 years old? When uh, they sent me to prison, the day I got convicted, they uh, the lieutenant at the jail drove me here, and uh, on the way here. He's, we drove past where I'm at now, and uh, he's like, "This is a, that's a place you don't want to go." And uh, I was like, "All right." And uh, like a few a few years, like a couple years later, I ended up being where I'm at now at Idaho Maximum Security. And uh, at the time, I was scared, but now it's I don't know, just get used to it. Did the prosecution have the death penalty on the table at any point in time? Uh, no. You're ultimately convicted of voluntary manslaughter and grand theft auto, receiving a 30-year prison sentence. How did you feel when you were handed down your sentence? I was like, I was expecting them to give me way more, and uh, my uh, my lawyer talked to the prosecutor and them and got the a deal for 30 years imposed, and uh, they offered it to me, and I was like, okay. How do you spend your time on a day-to-day -day basis? 
On a day-to-day basis, I, I just, because uh, I'm in Max, we only get out uh, an hour and 45 minutes a day. And uh, so I'll come out, uh, shower, use the phone, and then uh, wait for them to sell us up. And then once I get sold up, I just watch TV. Uh, I learned how to crochet. So I do that and watch TV all day, really. Have you taken any type of rehabilitative classes or furthered your education since being incarcerated? No, I... When I first came to prison, I uh, I took these uh, mental health classes, like uh, living with anxiety and living with depression. And it was just... Uh, learning how to cope with those and uh other than that i uh uh i try to go to like educate there's because i have so long of time until i get parole that they don't even let me do anything have you been diagnosed with any mental illnesses uh yes uh ptsd uh anxiety and depression before we conclude this interview, is there anything you'd like to talk about that we haven't covered yet? No. Not that I could think of. That was my interview with Tyler Naughton. Thank you for listening.